so glad that all of you are here tonight. It's going to be a busy meeting, and I'm going to try to move this along as fast as I can. What we're going to do first is the business of our annual meeting. We have to elect officers, approve the budget, and file amendments. But all of those have already been published, discussed, and basically it's an up or down vote this evening, so we will do that. Our slate of officers for 2017-2018. For president, I will run it again. We do not have anyone currently nominated for vice president. That position is open. If anyone would like to make a nomination, they would that elect the, the election for vice president will be held at the next meeting. Secretary will be John Robertson. Treasurer is Dave Wolf, who is not present this evening. And Jeremy Jones will be the representative from Riverview because we do not have any other officer on the board of the Riverview neighborhood. Is there a nomination for vice president? Yes. My sister got time, she was interested in doing that position. Her name's Andy Young. Andy Young. Yes. Okay. Um, we will put her nomination and publicize it in the newsletter. And have a vote on it as next week. Is there a motion on the floor? Is there a motion to make for to yes? I move that we make an option by aggravation since there are no other there are no votes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? In front of you you should have a copy of the At this time, I will call for a motion to approve the budget. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The budget is approved. The last item on the business part of the meeting will be the proposed bylaw amendments. Uh, again, these bylaw amendments were discussed extensively at the last meeting. They were uh, posted on the website and have been discussed in the last two issues of the newsletter. Does anybody have any comments or concerns? Is there a motion to approve the bylaw amendments? Motion made. All in favor of approving the bylaw amendments? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Our first speaker this evening is essentially our host. Neil McNulty is the new president of Eggleston Services, who are people who allow us to hold our meetings here um, every month. And he asked for the opportunity to come and speak to us. Mr. McNulty. Thank you, Joey. Welcome. I'm really honored to be here. I understand that we have had this meeting here for a while, and I wanted to introduce myself. I know that it's been a long, long day for many of you, and I have to salute anybody who serves in a civic capacity, uh, it, especially in a volunteer capacity where you know, it's very difficult to find people that will step up and carry the fire for uh, an organization like the Civic League. So we, you know, I must say that this is a great turnout. I've lived in the Hampton Roads area since the 1980s. I came here with the Marine Corps as a young captain and settled down here and to start a business in Virginia Beach that ended up uh, going nationwide placing transitioning military people into jobs and their civilian careers as they leave active duty. We ended up having offices from here all the way to Seattle and down in the southwest as well. And it was the success, frankly, of that business that allowed me to have a second act of sorts in the nonprofit 501c arena. I uh, took a position with a faith-based organization. I was the CEO of Catholic Charities of Eastern Virginia for a few years. Then I also ran a state a, uh, statewide healthcare nonprofit, which is very, it was the Virginia Business Coalition on Health 
which is very similar to a statewide chamber of commerce with a healthcare theme. All the major healthcare uh, players in Virginia were our members. And that was based here in Virginia Beach, and it was a great position, but we were such a great organization that we were bought out and moved to Richmond, and there was my job, and it was a little bit too much. But I'll tell you that I've known in Bagelston for many years, as many of you have as well, I've been around 62, 62 years, and I have always been listening to the radio here in Paul Atkinson, who many of you know, he took over this organization 30 years ago. It had nine employees, we have over 700 now, and multiple lines of business. We have 12 locations <laughs> across southeastern Virginia, and so as I would listen to the radio and hear, that, hear Paul on the radio, I'd say, you know, that's somebody I'd like to meet. And you know, long story short, I shot him an email, met with him, and uh, we kind of clicked and hit it off. And as we were walking out the door, he said, you know, I, uh, he's been in charge of a very large organization for a long time, and he had been thinking about hiring a president. He remains CEO, he is the boss, but I am honored to serve Edelson and to work for a great guy like Paul Atkins. I've been in the job now since February, so my learning curve is just starting now to level off. It was very steep, somewhat like a fire hose, but now it's like, you know, more like a, a squirt gun or a garden hose or something, but it's still a lot to learn. Because what we do is a tremendous service to many, many people and their families. If any of you have family members who are persons with disabilities, you'll know what we're talking about. Now this room right here is where we have services, where we have persons with disabilities who get great joy painting on you know, things like the walls and playing pool and doing things. Because years ago it used to be if you if you were a person with significant disabilities, your prospects were not very bright. You know, you your family would do their best to take care of you. You know, the option was you could be you could be institutionalized and, you know, and sent away. Most people wanted to keep their people, their persons with disabilities and family members in the family in their home. But in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know, organizations like Eggleston started to emerge where we said, you know what, persons with disabilities deserve to have a life like anybody else. They deserve to have a career. They deserve to have self-esteem and a paycheck. And that's what we do. And our mission just, I, you know, this is the job I wake up every day very, very excited to do because when you see the real joy that is projected by the people that we serve, it just warms your heart. You know, and they, they do their jobs very, very well, and they love their jobs. You know, it's amazing to me because I've been in, in the staffing industry where I've seen people that didn't really like their jobs and wanted to move on to something else. And then I look at the other end of the spectrum and I work with people today who are absolutely thrilled with their jobs, and they're so thrilled to have a job. To a long story short, Eggleston can provide those kinds of opportunities. We have multiple lines of business. Right here on the Tanner's Creek, uh, what I call the mini mall, we have, yeah, we have Let's Go Pet Care where you can get your dog washed and you can buy supplies for your pets. We also watch pets as well. We have a garden center. If you have ever visited our garden center, when I first walked in there, I said to myself, you know, this is a very small garden center. I, you know, I live in Virginia Beach off you know, in Thoroughgood where we, my wife and I would go to McDonald's Garden Center and get anything that we want. But we'd also pay for that. And then I walked into the garden center here, not expecting much, and I started asking Walter, do you have this kind of product? Oh, yeah, we do. Do you have this kind of product? Oh, yes, we do. We have this kind of product. Yes, we do. It's almost unlikely that anything that you need to have a great garden is not being sold right here at our garden center. And guess what? When you buy something from our garden center, you are keeping persons with disabilities employed. Our biggest problem is people don't really know what we do. You know, they, they know the name, they know about our auto auction, which is on military highways. Every two weeks we auction off about 100 vehicles that are donated to us. Well, people know about that, but they don't know that we have a world-class garden center right here, that we have a pet care center. You know, if you have a dog, we have a little dog. My wife takes care of the dog. I originally was hesitant because we have two cats also, and they didn't want a big fight in our house. looking beautiful, and if I'd known we, that we were doing that here for years, this would be the place that we go, because we really take good care of your pets. And so if you have a dog, try our dog wash, right next door. You know, if you, you know, bring your dog over here, you know, from my understanding, the first time you're in there, it's 
percent off. And we want it to be such a great experience that you come back over and over again. Same thing with the gardens. We also do embroidery. If you if you are part of an organization or you have you know a team or something where you have uniforms and you have names embroidered on your uniforms or on your ball caps, we do that also. And we do it extremely well because it's detailed work. And I will tell you that persons with disabilities do detailed work like nobody's business. They do it to perfection. Many, many of them are perfectionists and they get it for perfect every single time. So I guess to wrap up here is this, is that I would hope that you pass the word, number one, that you visit our garden center here in the next few, few days. Now take a look around. If you have a dog, get, get your dog washed here. Give us one shot, one try, and if you come back, we're thrilled. And we're going to try to make it a great, great experience for you. So give it a shot. Visit our you know, embroidery center. We also do shredding. If you work in an organization that has to shred documents, like almost every organization, we have a shredding operation that is probably as big as any of the big companies that do shredding. And we're about 30% cheaper than anywhere else. So if you work in an office that shreds documents and you're paying X, Y, Z, you know, we're, we charge X. And we do the same job. We come to your place, we pick it up, we bring it to our shredding center, and we shred it, and we keep you apprised of what the results are. So I just want to say, give us a try. You'll come back over and over again. My goal as president is I want you to have what I call a delightful experience where you're wowed, and you come back over and over again so that you can also participate in a great mission, the mission of keeping persons with disabilities with a job and a future. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you paying attention so much in our community, and we appreciate the opportunity to be able to meet here.
guys have the, if you guys are the driving force and you have the most numbers here, this flow of resources are going to go. Uh, so if I can't get people to report, I've been out on the streets, I can't make individuals report, but they, I have been told like I don't. So tell your friends, tell your neighbors to make sure they, they can call it in, they can do it online, or they can do it with an officer. Hey, if you see me on the street, you didn't do it two days ago, flag it down, I'll do it. If the computer's working, uh, I'll do it. But I'll, I'll be happy to do it. Um, so that's the biggest thing we have. Uh, of, the, of the 28 incidents, we did have the burglary. Uh, the gentleman was arrested. Again, crime opportunity. Walk in the street, saw the screen door was open. Just walk into the house. Took an item, left, all the trailer to arrest him. Uh, he dropped his ID. So, but, but again, it's, it's a crime opportunity. Um, that's what most of this stuff's going to be. So we just want to reduce the opportunity and hopefully they'll, uh, like, well, like all private, they'll go somewhere else to this group. Does anybody have any questions, concerns, or anything that I have to hit on anything they would like me to go into more detail? Yes, ma'am. How long can your house be parked on the streets? You still put long in the middle of the formation of the fault. What the problem? You can you can report them, however, it's being a city street, it, it's public property and you can use the park there. Um, I actually had a number of character plans come in where it was somebody you just aren't used to seeing. Actually, two of the three I did one day were residents of the neighborhood, and the neighbors reported them, uh, which is fine. Uh, they, they, were, they had some violations of the car, but both of the reports said this vehicle doesn't belong in the neighborhood, and they're parked in front of the house. So sometimes it's a new neighbor. You guys get into military community, and there are even some renters and college kids, so that you get some new people coming through. Uh, so it very well could be a neighbor you just aren't familiar with yet. Uh, but as far as public treatment, it, it's, it's part of the because of you. You can put it in. I'll come check on it. Um, as long as it's not abandoned or not uh, there's not there's not much we can do. But I do understand the frustration that it's most people don't know that the parking is tight. Georgia Southern University. 
Any of you are old and many football fans, you've heard of them at least twice. <laughs> You got beef with me. 
Dodge City. I get off before you get off. They know each other. We have one homicide today that is truly a parody mix of who did it. That's the facts. That's the facts. We don't have people out here randomly killing people. Unfortunately, the folks that have met their demise, live a certain lifestyle, that brings that type of problem to them. That's the reality. That's the reality. The only innocent bystanders in our 16 homicides this year are the young people. Young people. Perhaps a girlfriend. I can talk to you all night long, but if you have any questions, now is the opportunity. Yes? <coughs> when I, who are you? I, who are you? I'd like to know who I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Hello, sir. My name is Ann Fitzgibbon. Okay. And I live over in Florida Place. And actually, we met once before. Very okay. nice. Different times, different neighborhoods, more neighborhoods, uh, more property to police. So what we have now is a community resource officer that's dedicated to a sector, all right, right. who has the oversight of a lieutenant, all right, and that lieutenant has the oversight of a captain who's out there who has that I manage. Right. Um, I think you what you will find is what I just laid out to you five minutes ago. You got a problem. Okay. So are you saying that the, that the base are going to have more officers? No, I'm not saying in that. The at all. No, I'm officers? saying that I'm saying that um, there's more sectors and districts to cover now. Alright? The pace officers did not have as many officers as we have now. We have more CRO, community resource officers, than we had doing pace time. I think there was just one officer to each uh, sector. Right. Now we have to it's five. Right. Oh. The other part of the police here because That's correct. That's the division. Well, that's, that's part of it. The medical model That's what he was referring to. The medical model, when you go to the doctor, when it's over eight, people will tell you what's good for you. Right. Rather than you and him compromising what's good for you. So the difference is we allow you to have to do the input. Okay? okay? As to what's going on in your neighborhood, what can you do to assist us and vice versa? Okay. Yes, sir. I didn't like the acronym anytime. Police assistance community enforcement. And it made it sound like that it was our responsibility to take care of law enforcement. And for you guys have to be around with you hand. Think about it. Think about the acronym. Yeah, I mean, the idea was behind it, though, really, it was to have a partnership, but it wasn't all the same. We don't have a partnership now. We have two face officers here. You do? We did. We get to what about now? Huh? What about now? We don't call them face officers. I know, but they're the same thing. They do the same thing. Community resource officers. What about now? Oh. Oh. Is that good? Okay. Um, John Phillips, I live in a new place on my own. Uh, in Bay Tech. Okay. We're on Grandy Street. The number one complaint I'm waiting for in the base time is speeding. Um, your officers are out there They're all the time, and I see the numbers when I see them popping people left and right. What is the other thing that we can do to help us? Besides, we're not going to fast as we don't want those tickets. But could the city, like, double the fines in the neighborhood? Maybe that might slow uh, You know, speeders are always going to be speeders. One of the things we are but looking 60 at... 16 or 30 is a little bit much. One of the things we're looking at, okay, I'm looking at, uh, task on traffic to look at. Now, we have the light 
white, not the white red, but the red light camera system in certain places throughout the city. Although it's a civil process, I like to see some of our problematic areas. You know, because in DC they got those machines that are speeding it takes a photograph. You get a ticket. You get a ticket. And a fine. That's one of the things we're exploring. Okay? I, I, we don't have enough policemen to police all the areas in the city. I talked to, to Delegate Harrington. Okay. In the 89th district. The 89th district. 99th, not the 89th. Anyway, it's the same the name is correct. And he said he'd be willing to give me him to help sponsor a bill to allow um, speeding cameras as well as traffic light cameras. He said he'd be willing to do what? I was sponsoring my first to build through. Okay. Just to give you somebody to talk to and help. Yeah. Can Capture I you more than that? Capture that name from me. Here we go. Steve Sparks, I'm just kind of representing Pat and Randy. I'm on the board. Uh, continue with him. So the biggest problem we have with Tanners is north, but not Riverview per se, but northbound from 42nd Street over the bridge is a racetrack in the morning okay. and the evenings yeah. with motorcycles racing and um, southbound is, is bad enough but it doesn't seem like there's ever any focus on okay what's the on okay. Same, place. same place so pretty much 40 seconds you can hear them and they usually copy the first or second clutch leave 42nd street usually at the top of the morning top of the bridge oh just any vehicle just cars sports cars a lot of motorcycles since the weather has gotten nice. Sure, sure. It's, but you can imagine how late they are. Time of day? Kind of time of day. It usually starts about 5.15 in the morning. You know, it's not too much money. It goes to about 9. It picks up around noon. It picks up again about 4. And it'll go to about 3 o'clock in the morning. Good. So we usually get about two hours of sleep. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I, you know, I've talked. Andre McClellan, Donald Drake, Teresa Whitley, Winter Benda. What did it tell you? That was, oh yeah, that's a problem, we'll take care of it. And I, I've been addressing it with him for a year. Just not a year. What's your name again? Steve Sparks. I'm going to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget my name. I'm going to get it. Steve Sparks. You want to just go in the right I know this is out of your, uh, your department, but I'm Southbound coming off the bridge, there's a dip, and I've, I've addressed it with John Stevenson and Peter Drake, and they're like, yeah, we know it's a problem, you know, it's not in the timeline, but what's happening now, these open utility, like landscaping trailer, when they're hitting that up now, material, uh, one day was a wheat black and one day was red, they were actually, it's, it's such a dip that it's, these items are bouncing out of the trailers, and then they're trying to wrestle their traffic again and get much better. That's the more recent, which tells me maybe that. Do we have a mechanism where people can capture these in these points? Do we like, capture this information or we just hear it out? Well, Officer Whitehouse would be the guy. Between him and Bob Miller, they're pretty good to take care of us, but there's only so much. No, I like to have follow up. We had two fatalities. I like to follow up. So, yeah. same location. There are two, two motorcycle fatalities last year. Same location? In, in Riverview. Cut the speed, it was coming down the ground. Um, January south, when it was snowing, and this made my head raise. Uh, Trying to trailer coming down the bridge, speeding, lost control, ended up in the gas station. Let me tell you what you folks want to do. Anytime you have an incident like that, if it's legitimate, let somebody know. Not telephone, not like we're doing right now. Email works wonders. I just got to keep going. I've been emailing for years. Who are you responding to? I've addressed it to Thelma, Greg, Teresa Whitley, Andrew Marcella, John Stevenson, Winter Mendo, which I call him now for not responding. Uh, Captain and Lieutenant of the 3rd Precinct, and everybody says the same thing. It's a problem. All right. We, we don't know how to be called. He's got an email screen. He can send you. Larry.boom at Wolfram.gov. Maybe we need to come together and be in the center of this, the discussion and how we address that. I'll be more than happy to. I'm holding you to that. I had a bunch of pastors. 
come see me when I first made Chief, and I saw how they worked with Chief Goldsmith. And they said, how can we help you, Chief? We're here for you. And Chief Goldsmith would always say, oh, just support me when you can. So I was waiting for them. them and other organizations. Chief Boone, how can we support you? I said, well, I'm glad you asked that. I want to develop a clergy patrol in which you patrol with our officers in some of our most problematic areas right outside your church. Friday and Saturdays, I have your committee, all 40 of you, sir. Well, yeah. I got about one third of that. But I tell you what it does, when they see me, they know what I'm thinking. <laughs> I ain't got to say anything, but the first thing I hear about, I haven't forgot about you. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. I say I like to say, okay, when you want to do something with me and the men in our room, I'm going to put something together. I'm going to hold you accountable. You hold me accountable. I say that in front of these people. Next question. You were here. Uh, back to the speaking thing, which was what the Jeff was thought of in the corner question. Um, how complicated have you found it to have it? cameras put in, that's a little disconcerting. <laughs> uh, is it a complicated process? Is it just a municipal approval? Does it have to go to the state? I think it's all of that. All of yeah, that. I think it's all of that. And then what I was originally going to ask you before we went down that road was, I mentioned before that we broke up a couple of little attempts at taking packages off people's porches, whatever it is. Um, how how helpful is that for you all? And how, I mean, you obviously don't want us chasing criminals down because, you know, we can get hurt. But there's got to be a, a point at which, you know, we help you to a certain degree, triangulating in on where somebody is, you know, paying attention, you know. You yeah, know yeah, and yeah. I have found that with dispatch, which I know is slightly detached from you guys, if I remember correctly. Um, Sometimes they, they want to get you off the phone quickly. And I understand that because they have a lot of calls coming through. But is it helpful to stay on the phone with the dispatcher and you know, get in your car and follow this person that's two blocks down and just let you all know where they are? I know that's a, a I'm never going to advise way. you to pursue anyone. Okay? I understand that. All right. Um, but if you, any information you can provide, obviously it's helpful. Okay. I know you, but what do you do? Are you an artist or something? <laughs> 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 Just a complainer. I've been playing for no, 37 no. years. You've probably seen any black maybe. No, no, I thought you were an artist. Hey, I think later, though, our civic league is addressing the fishing on Mayflower Road. I think that's why Wayne is here, maybe James is here. But before you leave, Last year, our civic league voted to remove the no fishing signs on Mayflower Road. Um, and it's working its way, I understand, through council with, I know mean, Andrew McClellan was pushing it. But, and then recently, on next door, there was a, a neighbor that mentioned that was out there with his kids fishing. And, you know, you know go back 20 years, my girls were the same thing, and the neighbors called the police on us, but that's when the signs were there. You know, we're just, uh, my opinion, and I think many of us here, before that code goes through and those signs officially get removed, is there any chance that we can get our officers just to back off people and let them fish there? The, the goal was to make the Lafayette River fishable and swimmable by 2014. I mean, I watched a guy pulling a puppy drum out of there two weeks ago. It was this big, and he was so proud. We were cheering him on. I mean, you know, it, it's just such a cool thing, but I, I'm not just doing sending people away for fishing, you know, and I think, you know, we should allow the folks to fish and chief. I, I think, think we've suspended enforcement. Is that right? Absolutely. But, but what you need to understand about that is, no, the police department is the only one that enforce uh, uh, like the license and the summons and all that. Now what you may have seen is that maybe 
know, the, in the Civic League meeting uh, last year, there was an individual in front of my house who did get a, you know, did get a ticket, did pay about $160 fine. You know, and it was just a real travesty. I mean, that that happened, but but it is what it is. Like, if you get dirty copies and there's four pages, so, but we 
driven it, I drove it in the rain, I've looked at it, and so there are a couple of things to consider with this. This is a pilot program, so we have the option to potentially say, let's look at it in small chunks and then move forward with full implementation. That could be one option. Or you could just say, hey, we just want to go and do it. But there are some considerations. The first one for me is because I am just like anal about this, and that's litter. Okay? So anybody who knows me, I'm out picking up litter all the time. I have my kids picking up litter every weekend on the beach, right? I don't live here. I don't live over in Lafayette, Wynona. I take my kids out to the beach every weekend because that's what we do as part of our civic responsibility, right? So one of the things you have to consider is if you go out on that stretch, it's really clean right now, okay? And so either uh, for the most part, I think it will remain clean, but I think there's some things that the community can do to help keep it clean. And that would be because it's something that you want as a community is to look at a spot. Okay, so that would be one. To say that we as Colonial Place Riverview, we're going to take responsibility to, to keep it clean. Because if you're independent, I'm just going to be honest with you, I've been working in Grand Parks for three years, and it is the happiest place on earth because for the most part, all I get is smiles from people, right? Because I worked in code enforcement for three and a half years, and, and I still have chills sometimes, you know. You guys know what but I love it in Red Park because we're all about trying to get people outside, okay? So, you know, our tagline is get out of the way. So, with that said, is that I believe that this is a partnership and there's a community responsibility to help keep it clean, okay? With that said, the question is, do we want trash cans out on Mayflower? Or is this something that the community is going to say is that we're going to make sure that we continuously come along here and clean it up, okay? It's my understanding from the health department that there has been rodent infestation in the past. So as a result of that, if we do have some kind of cans, then we got to think about what kind of cans we want. I can tell you, if I live in front of Mayflower, I don't want the standard Red and Park trash can. What, what, what color is that standard Red and Park trash can? Is it brown or is it rusty? <laughs> take it, vote on it, and move it forward. But that is something to consider. So do we want cans to be out there? That's something that you guys can decide or say, are we going to continue to come through here and sweep it and keep it clean? Okay, so that would be one thing. But it looks really nice out there the way that, um, the, the, the way it sits out on the water to maybe not have the cans there. But that's something for the community to have to make a decision about related to cans. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So we asked if there were trash cans there. It would be record parks that would empty those cans. Okay. Just so, the Beach or anywhere else. Okay, so recreational parks, we empty all the cans in all of the parks. We don't need beaches anymore because um, public works is taking over waste management, it's taking over the cans along the beaches. <laughs> but in all the parks we do well. Can you anchor them so they don't flow? We would have to anchor them. So that would be one of the things that would have to happen. How often do you guys Okay, so that would be dependent on service level. So like right now, probably for something like this, it would probably be every Monday, right? And then probably on Friday, so going to the weekend. So it would probably be twice a week. You know, I just don't know what the you know what the service level is. So for example, you get a place like Lafayette Park where uh, it's so intense that they're in there, I think, like three days a week that they're in there. So we have trash cans, right? So then we have to think about trash cans with covers on them, right? The rest of the it. Uh, no, there are canisters out there. So I mean, it's just stuff that we have to think about. But, but, but those may be phased, right? Because this, this, in my mind at the moment, the earliest we can get this to city council would be July 18th. That would be the earliest we can get it to council. Yes, sir. Wait, one of the problems would be when it's high tide and it's hurricanes, those trash cans, float. I, I think, you know, if we're taking a vote, people can bring their trash in, they can take it out and not have trash in. <laughs> so that's for the 
people that you have to remember, this isn't just for the colonial place neighborhood, right? This is for everybody in the city. Because once you lift that restriction, there's everybody in the city that does it, right? So one of the concepts, if you were to, if we, if we lived in New Zealand, that'd be a great concept. Because they believe in, you know, pack it in, pack it out, right? But here in Norfolk, pack it in, pack it out, hasn't quite gotten it too much. So we haven't received a memo. Massachusetts, the exact same thing you gotta bring, what you bring in, you take out. Right. But it's one of those things that we can watch and say that initially what we are requesting as part of this proposal is that what we would say is no cans at this time. We want to monitor it, and then if we run into an issue, let's get some cans. Right. Okay. When did we have a, a major rat infestation and how bad was it? Okay. How long did it last? I don't know because the health department, when we had a meeting to discuss this, um, the health department was the one that brought that to our attention.
this, this is pertaining to the code section related to Mayflower. The other area that we will be looking at is on the northern foot of the Grand Street Bridge, underneath the underneath the bridge right there. On the west side. Right. So with that one, we would need to discuss that with the Civic League on Yes, correct. Because there's a portion of it on the other side. Well, I don't want to say to take it that. Mm -hmm. I've been there for 43 years, and that sign comes in handy when somebody comes along there. And it's not just fishing, it's more crabs that follows us than fishing. Are you talking about La Valette? He's talking about Peach Asbury. One line between La Valette and Apple. Okay. And it extends actually south from Apple. Don't apply, Jack. He's just talking about Colonial. Yeah, we're just talking about Colonial Place at this time. That's all. Separate meeting. All right. Not your I, 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 do you know why so many, I mean, there, there had been less than half a dozen signs remaining that some were there when I was a kid. And I'm that. Um, 18 months ago, all of a sudden, I remember it all water from, I think I got a 27 went up overnight. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't do know you why. know what the reason was for that? It, I don't know why. It doesn't, it doesn't matter because now we're talking Then there was option two, and then option three was 
you in the coordinates? Please raise your hand. Anyone opposed? Okay, we've got two opposed and the rest are in favor. The motion passes. with a stick in it, and several years back, it's at the corner of Mayflower, Mayflower, New Hampshire, and God's Hill. There used to be a mermaid sitting on it. The mermaid has a much lovelier home now near the entrance to the community and a nice new resting place. And still there remains the chunk of cement with a pipe in it that is a tetanus shop waiting to happen for a kid. Here at Pacific Week in October, and uh, he has 
several informative things. It was questions that had come out from people in the community, and he answered several questions. Um, and I actually did a um, transcription. You know, did, of course, these are filmed these days. I did a transcription of this entire presentation, and in reviewing it, several questions still were left unanswered. I just met with John Stevenson recently. He uh, gave me two hours of his time. And I even picked up where the last committee that was headed by Dave McDonald left off. That committee never had an opportunity to finish his work. And it had developed several proposals. John uh, Stevenson and I sat and went through every single one of those proposals and talked about them. Um, and it was really an informative meeting. He spent a lot of time with me. Um, I was really appreciative. I got an answer to a lot, of, a lot of things that cleared up from this presentation that were left by answer. Uh, then, as some of you may know, I also put out a request for um, concerns, ideas, suggestions about traffic issues in the neighborhood. Uh, and I put that out on next door as well as uh, I put it in the newsletter and gave a website that you could go. Uh, to the, or an email rather that you could send these to. I collected every one of them. John Stevens and I went through every one of those one by one, and he gave me the time to do that. So I have answers <laughs> to, to all of your questions and concerns. And the good news is almost everything is possible. John is a guy that says, I never say never. Um, so all things are possible. What I'm hoping at some point, I don't know exactly, I'm answerable to the board. Uh, this is a traffic task force that serves at the pleasure of the board. So I can't make any decisions about anything. I'm gathering information. And I'm going to be doing a presentation to the board and at some undetermined time in, in the future. Um, going over these documents. And John Stevenson is going to be investigating several of the things that I asked about. But once again, I have to get approval from the board before I get in the void and go and do that. So there's a lot of stuff in motion. Right? There's a lot of really valuable information. Thanks. And um, we're hoping to move forward with this event. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
city. We've alerted uh, the planning department. They're aware of it. It's being discussed on a lot of different levels. And yet, this guy keeps doing it. And it's just, it, it's so uh, irritating on so many different levels because it's a, it's a prejudicial statement about our community. It's not, it's, if, uh, everybody knows college students maybe don't live in the, in, in, you know, the life of Riley, but they deserve to have a clean, safe, well-built environment. And this house is never going to be that. It's stripped it off. It's just a mess. And I, I want the community eventually. We may, those of us on the block, we need your support about this horrible, horrible house. <laughs> contact you contact us. Yes. Yes. If you would talk to John after the meeting. Okay. Just the heads up. Just so everybody knows, you can, the, the roofing pack, whatever it is from the U.S. has a lot of coal, and you can take it just as it's very well and put it in a dumpster now. And you can put it in a dumpster? It's legal. It's, it, they consider, they, they change the, the code on it, it's no longer considered friable, which means if you break it, comes into the air. So that's been probably 15 years ago. But it goes to a landfill. I mean, it doesn't, it's not like they just dump it down the road out of the dumpster. There's some regulations around it, but you can, as a roofer, take an asbestos roof off and put it in a dumpster. Yeah, there's two different types of asbestos. Yes. Yeah, so generally, it's two different types. Well, if the man decides to rent it, then you can do this. I'm saying you have to be careful because you can rent a man, um, several men, and it's okay. There is still an ordinance in the Commonwealth of Virginia that if you rent to more than three ladies, the three or five, I think it's one of three. Maybe four. My daughter is in a place in Well, it's five. 